Okay, welcome everyone. Um, this is sort of the last lesson of the first half of this chapter. This chapter kind of has two different parts to it. So this is the last time we're going to be focusing on the coordinate grid. Um, so today we're going to be focusing on something called coterminal angles. So we'll explain what that means pretty much right away here. So we're going to skip the get started. Um, that's just a review of the previous day's lesson. We're going to go right into these um, questions here where we're just drawing certain angles. Um, so let's draw 300 degrees. So to draw an angle, remember we've got to set up our coordinate grid. I'll draw that. Oops. I'm going to draw it. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. So I'll draw a coordinate grid for each one of these. And we'll do two more down here. So you'll notice some of these angles that we're going to draw are bigger than 360. So that's kind of one of the main ideas today. We're going to be focusing on angles that could be larger than 360. Um, so more than one complete circle or actually even negative angles as well today. Okay, so we have to recall what our sort of base angles are at the axes. So this is uh, 90, 180, and 270. And then if I go all the way around, we're at 360 again. So 300 degrees is between 270 and 360. So we would have been able to draw this last day. So this is 300 degrees. The reference angle would be this angle in here, and that would be 60 degrees. The reference angle, just to review. Um, so there you go. That's how you would draw 300. Um, 360 would actually be one full circle. So 60, 360 and zero are actually the same thing because they would create the same terminal arm. So what we can say is actually that 360 and zero are what's called co-terminal angles. The word co often means like together um, and they end in the same terminal arm. So that's why they're called co-terminal. Zero and 360, they create the same terminal arm. Okay, so 400. Um, 400 is greater than 360. So remember 360 is all the way around the circle. So 400 would be all the way around. And then to figure out how much further you need to go, I just like to subtract um, 360 off of 400 and see what's remaining after you go once all the way around. So you would then get 40 degrees. So it'd be all the way around and a little bit more. So that would be your 400 degrees. Um, it's actually the same as if you just went 40 degrees. So uh, 400 and 40, since they create the same terminal arm, it's like drawing the same thing. They're called co-terminal angles. Okay, you guys try the next two here. You can pause the video and then come back in a minute and see what the answers are like, but try and draw these angles and figure out what they're co-terminal to. Okay, so um, 470 is like going all the way around because it's 360, it's bigger than 360. If I subtract 360 off of it, I get 110. So I'd then be another 90 and a little bit more. So I'd be in quadrant two here. And it would be coterminal with 110. So 470 is coterminal with 110 degrees. And then 570, same idea, it's bigger than 360, so we want to go all the way around. And then to figure out how much further we need to go, we can take off the circle and see what's left. And you'd have 210 degrees left, which is bigger than 180. So I'd go 180 and then a little bit more. So that would be how to draw 570, and it would be coterminal with 210. So that's the idea of coterminal. Um, when you have an angle bigger than 360, you're going to go all the way around and then a little bit more. Okay, you can also go in the negative direction and then you'll have a negative angle. So let's look at that here down below. So this would be the angle 150, um, but you could go negative 150, it just means you go in the opposite direction. Um, so you can have negative angles as well. Okay, um, so negative 510 degrees, for example, would be all the way around 360 in the opposite direction, 
plus another 150 more. Okay. So these are called again co-terminal angles, angles that up, end up in the same um, terminal arm. And the way that you get co-terminal angles is by adding or subtracting 360 degrees from that angle because you're going to go one full circle then. So for example, let's take the angle 70, like that's shown here. This is 70 degrees. Um, the way you can get more co-terminal angles that are co-terminal to 70 or would end up with the same co-terminal arm is you add 360 to it. So 430 would be co-terminal to 70. You could add another 360 again. 790 degrees would be co-terminal. You could also subtract 360, get negative 290 degrees, that would be co-terminal, and subtract another 360. So you can actually do this an infinite number of times and keep adding or subtracting 360 degrees and get lots and lots of angles that are co-terminal. The way that you can write an expression for all co-terminal angles that are co-terminal with, let's say, 70 degrees is add or subtract K so we just made up this letter K. You can use any letter actually. Um, so you go 70 plus K times 360, which means you're adding some number of 360 degrees. K could be any integer. So that would, that's what this means here. K is in the set of integers. K can be any integer. So that's sort of the mathy expression for writing. Take 70 degrees and add or subtract as many 360 degrees as you want, and you'll get coterminal angles for 70. Okay, um, let's put that into practice and try to check your understanding number one. We're going to use the space above because there's not much space below there. So to determine the measures of all the angles in standard position from 0 to negative 1,200 that are coterminal with 280, sketch the angles. Okay. So let's sketch the angles first. 280 would be, so 270 is here. So 280 would be just past 270. And the way that I'm gonna get coterminal angles is by adding or subtracting 360 degrees. Um, because I want negative answers, negative coterminal angles, I'm gonna subtract 360. So 280, minus 360, you can just use a calculator if you like, 280 minus 360. So the first one would be negative 80. That's what you would get if you went in this direction. Um, and then we can subtract another 360. And you can just leave that answer in your calculator and just say answer minus 360 if you want. You get negative 440 and we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep subtracting 360 until we go outside of the range they told us, outside of 400, or sorry, 1200, negative 800, negative 800 degrees minus 360. This one I can actually do is negative 1160. And that would be it. If I subtract another 360, I'm going to go past negative 1200. So these angles here are all co-terminal with 280. They would all create the same terminal arm. Okay. Um, write an expression for all the measures of the angle that are co-terminal with 280 in center position. So let's do that. So this is part A. So we would take our 280 and I would add on some number of 360 degrees. So K here can be any integer. It could be one, two, three, it could be negative five, negative six. So we say K is in the set of integers. We just indicate that with a capital I. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's kind of the basic definition of co-terminal angles. So now let's actually put this into use a little bit. And we're gonna go all the way to check your understanding number three. I think you can do check your understanding number two. If you wanna pause and try it there, you can. But I'm gonna go straight to check your understanding number three. So it says determine the exact values for the trig ratios for 1,003. 35 degrees. Let's first draw 1,035 degrees and then let's go from there. Always, always, always in this chapter, you want to draw a picture first if one's not already given to you. So 1,035 degrees. That would be more than one complete circle. So if I went all the way around, um, I would take off 360 and let's see what I have left. 
1035 minus 360, I've got 675 to go. That would mean another full circle all the way around again, minus 360 again, and I have 315 left. So it's two full circles all the way around and then another um, 315 degrees. So I'm gonna end up right there. Okay, that's a little cluttered. So I'm just gonna draw the terminal arm in my own set of um, X and Y grid here. Okay, so 315 is what I'm drawing and it's about here. The reference angle for 315 would be 360 minus 315 and that's gonna be 45 degrees. So this is 315, which is coterminal with 1035. And my reference angle is 45. So here's my nice right triangle here. Now 45 is part of one of our special triangles, our 45, 45 special triangle. So my side lengths, I already know them. They're one, one, and root two. Um, I'm gonna have positive one for the X, negative one for the Y, because I'm in quadrant four, and then square root two. Um, so I can write the trig ratios now. Um, I'll start with sine, cos, and tan. So sine of 1,035, cos of 1,035, and tan of 1,035. These be the same as 350. They're the same, because they have the same terminal arm. Okay. So sine of 1,035 would be opposite over hypotenuse, so negative one over root two. Cos would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan would be negative one. It's negative one divided by one. Um, there we go. There's our primary trig ratios, and that is it. Um, okay, let's try example. Check your understanding number four, and that's actually going to be it for today. Um, because all of the math is the same, actually, once you get, understand the primary trig ratios, um, or once you understand lesson two, really, and then, and then what a coterminal angle is, there the questions are all the same. Okay, so number four, it says, given that sine uh, alpha is negative five over 13, determine the exact values of the tr primary trig ratios, and then to the nearest degree, figure out what alpha is, but we're gonna give all the numbers between zero and 720 degrees. Okay, so let's do that up here. Check your understanding four. And we are given that sine alpha, so they've used alpha instead of theta, but it's the same idea. I'm just using a Greek letter. Okay, so first thing we wanna do, if we're not given what the angle is, we need to figure out our quadrant. We wanna use this cast rule, C-A-S-T. Um, and since sine is negative, we're not gonna be in quadrant one or two because that first sign is positive. So we're gonna be in quadrant three or four. So I'm gonna have two sets of answers, one for quadrant three and one for quadrant four. Okay, so let's say I'm in quadrant three. Let's draw our angle. It would look like this. Okay, um, and here's our right triangle. Now sine is Y over R or opposite over hypotenuse. And I can get this third side by doing um, the Pythagorean theorem. This side is going to be uh, negative 12 here. Um, you can get that by going 13 squared minus 5 squared. You'll get 12. Okay, so I can write my trig ratios here. Sine alpha, cos alpha, tan alpha, Sine alpha, I already know, I'm given that one. Cos alpha is X over R or adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 12 over 13. And it's negative because we're in the negative part of the X axis. And 10 is gonna be um, negative five opposite over adjacent. The negatives actually cancel out this quadrant is positive. Okay, let's say it was in quadrant four. Numbers are gonna be the same, but the signs will change slightly. Here's my right angle. Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. This time the 12 will be positive because I'm in the positive part of the 
x-axis, the sine, cos, tan. The numbers will actually all be the same, except this time the cosine ratio will be 12 over 13, not negative 12 over 13. And the tan ratio will be negative 5 over 12, not positive 5 over 12. Okay, so those are the sine and cosine and tangent ratios. Um, and then the third part says figure out what the actual angle alpha is. So let's say I'm in, I'm going to have two sets of answers. What if I'm in quadrant three versus what if I'm in quadrant four? So to figure out what alpha is, we first need to figure out the reference angle. And we can get the reference angle by using any one of these ratio, any one of these ratios. So I'm going to choose the tan, tangent one. So alpha reference is going to be inverse tan of 5 over 12. Let's type that in our calculator. This is not a special triangle, so it's not going to be an exact answer. I get about 23 degrees. So the reference angle is 23. So my actual angle alpha there will be 180 plus 23, which will be 203 degrees. Now the question actually asks, us to find more than that. They want us to give a more coterminal angles um, all the way up to 720. So I'm going to give another one. So this is one answer, but I'm going to give another one, which is 203 plus an extra 360. So what if I went all the way around again, which would be 563. If I try and add another 360, I'll be over 720. So those are the two possibilities there. For quadrant four, the reference angle would be the same, 23 degrees. So alpha would be 360 minus 23, which would be, I'm going to write my answer down here, uh, 337. And then we can give another 337 plus 360. Co-terminal answer would be 697. There's actually four possibilities for these angles to be, um, given that range of angles they told us between zero and 720. I can be 203, 563 if I'm in quadrant three, or 337 and 697 if I'm in quadrant four. Um, so that's it. That's the lesson today. I'll stop it there.